Here is the third video installment for the Lifespan Development uh, Theory Lectures of Personality for Marshall University, um, February 28, 2018. So, the last slide we looked at, we were talking about the case of Anna, a case of isolation. I want you to think about, as you're kind of taking these notes, I want you to think about how complete isolation, or even periods of isolation from the environment, could stunt personality development or halt personality development. Now, we get to back to one of the main arguments um, in psychology, one of the grand issues of psychology, which is nature versus nurture. To what extent are we who we are because of biology? To what extent are we who we are because of the environment? Um, Darwin and his theory of evolution. So we can kind of look at some different arguments from different people throughout history to think about this. And I think we may have even mentioned this in class and talked about it a little bit. Um, people. We have different personality attributes. Some are competitive, some are not. Some of us are criminals, some of us are not. Some of us are more affective or emotional, some of us not. Um, so the questions become, well, okay, introverted versus extroverted. Okay, any, any, any way you want to look at personality, to what extent is this biology? Is it endowed in us biologically? And to what extent do we learn to be this way? Are people instinctively competitive? And I would ask you if we were in class, do you feel that we live in a competitive society? And I think the answer is yes, we do. Think about it. A lot of you are younger. You're in your teenage years, early 20s. From an early age, you are basically competing in school for, uh, for grades. Adjust my camera again. Oops. You're competing for grades. You're competing for attention from teachers. You're competing in sports. You're competing in, you know, and as you progress up through middle and high school, you're competing for grades, for scholarships, for opportunities to attend college. You get in, out of college, into graduate school and beyond, you're competing for jobs. Uh, even on television, everything is a competition. Reality, TV, everything. You're competing for mates, for sexual partners. You're competing for money, for rewards, for prizes, for attention, for fame. So a lot of people would argue that competitive spirit or competitiveness is a personality trait that's very unique to the United States. Now, is that because we're biologically born as, as competitive, or is it because our environment makes us that way? So this is the kind of question that we would ask. Same with criminality. Are people born being criminals, or you know, do they just choose to be, or do they, does the environment force them to be? Um, certain abnormalities of the brain, we've already talked about, if they are atypically formed or damaged, um, can predict mental impairment, can predict criminal offending, for example. And then you have some people who are out of desperation and environment are forced to commit crimes to survive. So that would be more of an environmental argument as opposed to a biological argument. Gender, we've already talked about. Um, are men less emotional than women? Eh, I would say no, but, but women are taught and socialized through their gender that it's more okay for them to show emotion. And guys like me, we are taught that it's not okay to be more emotional. We, we should hide that. Um, Cesar Lombroso was a criminologist, and he actually thought that body type could be used as a biological blueprint for criminality. Uh, you could almost look at body type, and if you had a mesomorph, which was a muscular, stronger, hairy-looking guy, then he would be more prone to, to committing crimes because of his physical stature. So these are more, it's more of a biological argument. Uh, William Sheldon was a psychologist um, back in the early to mid-1900s. And he thought that men could be more biologically predisposed to be criminals if they were bigger, had body hair, bushy eyebrows, protruding foreheads, which is unfortunate because we know that is not what predicts a criminal. A lot of criminals are very skinny and have very little body hair, and some are like this stereotype and everywhere in between. What about the psychological influences on human development? This is a psychology class. Um, the term psychology comes from the Greek root psych, meaning soul or mind, and logos, meaning study, word or study. So, the study of the soul or mind. Now, this leads, this, this discussion of, of you know, biological determinants of personality or of functioning leads to the thinking that socialization is a product of the environment. Um, behaviorists in psychology focus, if you remember, focus on overt observable behaviors. Um, they were into looking at what can we see and observe objectively. Thinking, 
thought processes, those kinds of things, weren't really seen as appropriate areas of study for the behaviors. And they looked at things like reinforcement and punishment. Um, Watson was a famous psychologist who was a behaviorist who said something to the effect of, if you give me an infant, I can place him or her in any environment and make him or her turn out any way I want to, just based on manipulating the environment. Um, and coming with that is the idea that you can manipulate and form personality characteristics or encourage certain personality characteristics just by manipulating the environment of that child as he or she grows up um, through reinforcements, giving them things to encourage certain behaviors that you want, or through punishment, which is giving them things they don't like to discourage behaviors that you don't want to see. So, And we'll talk more about punishment and reinforcement at a later time. There are also sociological and historical forces that impact your human development and also your personality development. American sociologist C. Wright Mills uh, from the 1950s and 60s discussed what he termed the sociological imagination. Um, and I think this is important in trying to understand how we are as people, how we function as individuals at any level, uh, personality or otherwise. This sociological imagination ref refers to our ability to understand that as human beings, our competencies, abilities, attributes, likes, dislikes, appearance, etc. All of these things, and we could list any person that list of personality attributes that you want, all of these things are products of our historical time frame. We're products of our environments. So we, we simply cannot escape, according to Mills, the trappings and influences of our time in history. And I think he's, he's right about this. Um, this is I'll, I'll explain that a little more. This is closely related to the German notion of Zeitgeist, which literally translates to the spirit of the times. The time and the era that you're born into is going to influence a lot of how you develop and, and sort of what you produce, what people see, um, as reflected through different personality characteristics. For example, um, let's just look at professional athletes. If you had a supremely gifted athlete like LeBron James, who plays basketball for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, or Tom Brady, who is quarterback for the New England Patriots, I'm just using some examples. Um, had they been born 200 years ago, would they be as popular, successful? Probably not, because, well, basketball and football weren't around 200 years ago. These were not athletic pursuits that you could enjoy 200 years ago. Um, these guys are, are pretty popular, pretty confident, outgoing for the most part. Uh, they're not afraid of media attention. Uh, so these are all personality characteristics that have been encouraged by the environment, by the spirit of the times that they live in. So would they have turned out differently? Would these personality attributes or features have been shaped or molded differently 200 years ago? Well, maybe. We don't know for sure, but maybe because the the channel, or not the channel rather, but the, uh, the uh, avenue for, for sports just simply weren't around back then. So sometimes people are just in the right place at the right time to become rich and famous. And when you become rich and famous, that, that's reinforced. Confidence grows. Your bank account probably grows too. And it just it, it can actually influence and produce completely different personality features. Entertain, enter, entertainers, singers, for example. Um, and just being in the right place at the right time. A lot of the American Idol contestant winners... Uh, maybe just were in the right place at the right time. Without that show, maybe they would never have climbed to, to popularity or to fame or fortune. Hard to say. Hard to say. So, so the myriad of ways in which we develop as human beings is largely contingent upon the time in history that we were born. And we could go on and on and on with different examples of actors, actresses, uh, even people like you know, like physicists and scientists, um, you've got people, not to get really geeky and nerdy on you, but you've got Nicholas Copernicus, who was an astronomer who was asserting that, you know what, the sun is really at the center of the universe, not the earth, like everybody thinks. You actually could have been murdered for saying that at one time, because you would be considered a heretic. But he was right about that, and he's not given credit for that. He was not seen as being competent or smart brilliant. His ideas were not taken seriously. However, Isaac Newton came along and he was basically saying the same thing as Copernicus. Hey, you know what? Yeah, the sun is at the center and I'm going to prove it. And he was in the right place at the right time. 
and people believed it. For Copernicus, he was living and working during a time where the Roman Catholic Church was at the center of everything, and the idea that the Earth was at the center of the universe was like doctrine from God, basically. And to say otherwise, you were basically calling God a liar, and that was not a good thing at that time. When Newton came along, we were transitioning from one period in history to another where it was more okay for him to say that. And the Roman Catholic Church was, was losing some of its power, so it was more acceptable for him to assert his ideas, and he has largely given credit for this. So just, just another example. So the way that we develop in all of these different ways is largely contingent upon our social environment and the time in history that we're born into. All right, we have covered some required material. Uh, make sure you have good notes on this stuff, guys, and we'll call that the end of this video lecture and the end of the stuff on lifespan development. Thank you.